proud and free Land of work and joy in unity Victors in the struggle for the right We've won freedom's fight Oh, one strong and free 4th October 1964 Does that ring a bell? Zambia Zambia became independent We were free at last But what really were we free from? Is it violence, communism, slavery or fascism? Our memories are short For we have forgotten what this country has already done What free men and women can achieve When imagination is joined to common purpose And necessity to courage It was a slogan written in fine documents that determined the destiny of our nation. One Zambia, one nation. It was whispered by words composed by a clergyman which became the source of our confidence. A king who saw Zambia greater than all the differences of birth, wealth, or tribe. A president who breathed the meaning of those words with realities of our time. Tiende Pamozi na Mutima Umozi. A leader who further represented our greatest hope by declaring us a Christian nation. I further declare that Zambia is a Christian nation. A man who broke the chains of persecution so that our oath and pledge made to the flag that waves above and fills our hearts with joy and pride would be more eloquent and concise. In the face of our hardships, in the face of our difficulties, let us remember these timeless words. We shouldn't give it up. I repeat, We shouldn't give it up for expedience sake. Seared in the flames of withering injustice, they taught us we are not as divided as our politics and individual callousness suggest, that we're one Zambia, one nation, and together we can continue our journey with three words that will ring from city to city and from one village to the next. Be that change. We're one people saying no to tribalism. There's only one Zambia and one nation. You and I as citizens have the power to set this country's course and now more than ever, we must do this together as one nation and one people. Honesty and hard work, courage and fair play, loyalty and patriotism, as we believe in this country's sacred promise. We have defaulted on this promissory note to which every Zambian was to fall heir. Our journey has never been for the lucky. It has never been the path for those that prefer leisure over work, hate over love. Rather, it has been for the likes of our freedom fighters who embody the spirit of service and sacrifice, a willingness to find a meaning in something greater than themselves. It is this spirit that must inhabit us all, left battered by the storms of persecution that can be scarcely imagined. For us, they fought and died in detention during interrogations, struggled and worked till their hands were sore so that we might live a better life. For us, they were stripped off their rights so that you and I can say I have inalienable rights. Imagine, what can we achieve if we put our hands on the arc of history and bend it towards the hope for a better day? Africa is our own motherland Fashioned with and blessed by God's good hand Let us all our people join as one Brothers under the sun All one, strong and free We can acknowledge that different ideas will always be with us and still strive for dialogue. As students, we can consider demonstrations, but it should never, I repeat, it should never be our first option but rather dialogue and unity of purpose over conflict and discord. We can admit the intractability of deprivation and still strive for dignity. Clear-eyed, we can understand that there will be hard times and still strive for peace. We can do that, for that is the story of human progress. That is the hope of our freedom fighters. And at this moment of challenge, that should be our work. Zambia, that should be our work. The challenges we face are real. They are serious and they are many. Whether it is poverty or disease, 
crime or corruption, what we face today aren't only social or economic, but challenges in search of a bright solution. They are moral problems rooted in societal difference, in the imperfection of humanity, the cruelty of man towards man. The solution lies deep within us, and we have to reach in ourselves to find it. As spoken in scripture, the time has come to set aside childish things so that the noble ideals of democracy are passed on from generation to generation. What is required of us now is a new era of responsibility, a recognition on the part of every Zambian that we have duties to ourselves, duties that we don't grudgingly accept, but rather seize gladly, firm in the knowledge that there's nothing so satisfying than the spirit of service and sacrifice directed to a difficult task. This is the price and promise of citizenship. One land and one nation is our pride. Dignity and peace need Zambia sky. Like a noble eagle in its flight, Zambia. Praise to be your one, strong and free. This is my Zambia, your Zambia, our Zambia. So let us change for the better and make Zambia a better place for you and me. Now, now is the time to make real the meaning of democracy and freedom. Now is the time to make the benefits of a free society a reality for all God's children. As a great nation, we must empower our citizens with skills they need to work harder, learn more and reach higher. We must reduce the cost of our health care and size of our deficit. Leaders, do not seek to satisfy your thirst for power by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must conduct everything in dignity and discipline. We can never be satisfied as long as citizens are the victims of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. Vakapokola, everyone, I mean everyone, be that change to justice and equality, not only to ourselves, but to all posterity. Be that change. Be that change. Let us say together, be that change. Let it be said by our children and our children's children, that we refused to let this journey end and that we didn't turn back or flinch. And with eyes fixed on the horizon, we carry the spirit of our freedom fighters, the spirit of service and of sacrifice, and safely delivered it to future generations. We must pledge once more to march into the future with our heads held high and not give up. Zambia, we cannot turn back to the era of the struggle for freedom. Not with so much work to be done, not with so many children to educate, not with an economy so badly beaten and so many families to protect. As in words of scripture, we should hold firmly without wavering to the hope that we confess, be that change. The cruelty and injustice of man towards man are tragedies that must end. And to change that, we first must change. We must care for the vulnerable and protect people from life's worst hazards and misfortunes. We must harness new ideas, initiatives and enterprises. Our insistence on hard work and personal responsibility these are the constant building blocks of our character. Our job is easier because our freedom fighters gave it all for us. We should draw strength from their example and hold firmly to the words of Prophet Isaiah. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on the wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. We honor those who walked so we could run, so that our children can soar and we must not grow weary for we believe in God and we believe in this country's destiny, prosperity, democracy, and freedom. Be that change. Praise be to God. Bless our good nation. Free may we stand under the flag of our land, Zambia, praise to thee, O oh, one, strong and free. 
sharing is caring, but love is everything. So be that change that you want to see in society, no matter how big or small, for we are all in this together. May God bless Africa and the rest of the world.